What is up, people of YouTube? I'm your host, Vernon, and this is Lock Dubonet Pond. Let's fish that. All right, ladies and gents, made my way out to Lac du Bonnet, um, the pond section that is actually next to the little airport. And this is a particular spot that was suggested to me by some of my viewers. Just a shout out and say thank you guys for mentioning it to me. This is a pond that gets stocked with rainbow trout, brown trout, and tiger trout. And you are requested to release any tiger trout and brown trout you catch. You are, however, allowed to keep three uh, rainbow trout but it is also strongly recommended that you release them. The idea being that uh, we have a body of water where we can catch some trophy fish. Now, when I hear trout pond, the first thing I think about is a fly rod. But as you can see, it's rather windy today. A fly rod might not be the best idea. And I do know a lot of my viewers actually don't have fly rods. So let's try and use something different out there. Let's have a look at the setup we're going to be using. Alright, so they did spend quite a lot of money trying to get this park accessible for everyone, giving a wheelchair access as well, and it is a lovely, beautiful park. Now, whilst researching this particular pond, quite a lot of people saying online that you don't even need to bother. If you don't know what they are feeding the fish, you won't catch anything. Now, in some way, that is kind of true. Whenever you have stock trout that's being fed, it's very difficult to catch them. But that being said, trout can be caught either by feeding them or plain reaction getting a reaction strike as well so there's always a chance of getting some fish out there now it is a partly cloudy day today but it is also a summer day so i'm thinking these fish are going to be in deep they're not going to be up shallow they're going to be in deep holes hiding in the cooler water so it is also going to be very difficult to get flies out into the deep water unless you're very good at fly casting which i'm not that good at and that is why i'm opting for this setup now what we're going to be using out there today is a little drop shot rig this is just a little drop shot i'm using a bass setup drop shot but you can use any type of little lead weight even some bb bullets anything that you want to use on there and from a little lead weight about a foot or a little bit more to where we are making our loop knot and on this little loop knot we're going to be putting our lures and just above that i have a little barrel swivel it's not needed to use the barrel swivel you can actually tie this setup on your main line the only reason i have a barrel swivel is this is something that i tied in my off time at home now the important thing about this is you're not going to be fishing it straight down like it is hanging at the moment you're going to be fishing this at an angle that is why you have to have your lures a bit higher up because it's not directly above the weight it's going to be off to the side and that means it's going to be lower to the ground that's why you also need about a foot off of your uh, lead weight before you put a loop knot now let's quickly have a look at how to tie that loop knot all right so just to make it a bit easier to see the knot i'm going to tie it in a little stringer now the first thing you want to do when making a loop knot is make an actual loop now the size of the loop you make that is going to be the length of that little piece of line on your loop knot so if you want a longer one you make a bigger loop just going to make a smaller one for now all right so with our little loop then you're going to take your main line you put it through the loop you made you want to do that three times go from the back to the front three times there and then where you have this little section here you put your finger and you're going to take your line again and you go through another three times ensuring that you keep that little gap open there and you end up with a little loop like this three on this side three on that side a place where you're keeping your finger and you're just going to take this little bottom piece and you put it through that loop that you're creating 
and you then just pull and you tighten this entire thing. Now I don't want a loop knot in my stringer so I'm not going to tighten it but once you've gone through that little loop you've made you'll have a knot on each side making a little loop for you. Now it is important that you go through your loop in the same direction every time. If you don't go back to front, if you now go front to back, the moment you try and tighten this knot, the one side might actually come loose and the knot won't work. And of course, practice makes perfect. So practice your little knots before you go out and actually use them. All right, and before we get to the actual fishing, I wanna explain the setup that I'm using out there and why I've selected this particular setup to be throwing out there. All right, so on this channel, I try and tell people that you can go fishing using whatever rod and reel you have. You can still catch fish out there. But when going for something very specific, you need a specific setup. Now this is a seven foot rod. I'm going for a bit of a longer length because I want some good casting distance. And this is a fast action rod. When it comes to rods, you have moderate action and fast action. Now all that means is it's how much the rod actually bends. Now this rod only bends at the tip. It does not bend all the way to the backbone of the rod. Now this is very important when trying to do drop shot fishing. You are going to be moving and bouncing things slowly on the bottom. You need a fast action rod so you can impart the movement down your line to the little lure. Now over here I have a little dough bait special. Now this is actually a moderate rod, a medium light. And the general thing is this entire rod is bendable. It's not just the tip, it bends closer to the handle is where it starts bending and it bends all the way to the tip. Now this is a great rod for trying to t catch trout for the simple reason you want a bendable rod to actually keep the fish pinned. If you use a too stiff a rod, you might tear the hook from the fish's mouth. So this is a great rod to be using when throwing inline spinners and stuff, small lures you want to get a good distance on. You use a light setup that's very flexible and you're going to use some light line to cast out the lighter lures. An alternative to what I'm using out there today is something like my Luz speed stick. This is also a fast action rod. It's the tip that bends, not the entire rod. This is a worm rod. The idea being that you can bounce your little baits down on the bottom, impart it a lot better than using a flexible rod. That's not going to impart the movement down to your lures. Now this is a medium rod. That means it does have some bendability. You don't want a stiff rod. If you go for something like a heavy, it's going to be too stiff. You're going to tear out the hooks. And you'll see that I'm using a completely different reel. That is simply because the normal reel, I have some braided line on there and we don't want to be using braid. Braid is not stretchable and we need a stretchable line just to help fight the fish. If it's too much of a stiff line and a stiff rod, it's a lot easier to tear hooks from the fish's mouth, especially something like trout that have soft mouths. All right, so why the drop shot rig? Well, it's quite simple. That little weight is going to give us some cost ability so we can get out into the deeper water and more importantly we can fish our lures very slow on the bottom it's not a quick reeling action it's not something going through the water rather quickly a lot of times in summer these fish don't want to be chasing around any of the bait fish that's something that will happen in fall a lot of big brown uh, trout they tend to chase all the fish up against the reeds but in summer, they're going to be in the deep water, not chasing fish. So we want some slow moving lures down on the bottom. Now, the great thing about using a drop shot rig is the versatility. We can even swap out the hooks without needing to tie a new setup. And that's why I want to be using that out there. Let's throw it around, see what we can get out there, if anything.
Alright guys, we got a fish on. Talking to another gentleman. Oh, he just popped off. That was a little tiger trout. <clears throat> Not paying good attention to the fishing. We just managed to lose a little tiger trout. Just gonna get it out there, try again. Now I've actually never caught tiger trout before, so that would have been a new life lister. That's why I'm eager to try again, see if we can get on another tiger trout. And the nice thing about the setup we're using, we're casting it out into deep water. It's down on the bottom. It's not a quick retrieve. We're just slowly moving that little fly, bouncing it around, acting like an injured bait fish to see if we can get something to strike. All right, I've been testing quite a assortment of different lures, all shapes and sizes to see what these fish are keying in, keying in on. And we got ourselves a decent little brown trout. Now I've never caught that many brown trout before, so this is a new PV for me. Nice big brown trout. Just want to keep him in the water as much as possible. Now it is important to remember that in this lake, all the brown trout and tiger trout, you need to release them. You're not allowed to keep them. Let's have a quick look at this fish and then get a measurement on him. Lovely, big sized brown trout. It's very important to keep him in the water, keep him oxygenated. Also wanted to get a bigger net. It's just a lot easier to get the fish in the water, keep them in the water. Lovely little red spots. That's how I know this is a brown trout. You have the black dots on the top, red spots there on the belly. So from the tail to the nose, that's 40 centimeters. That's 16 inches. Lovely little 16 inch brown trout, my new PB. Now what I'm doing is I'm moving the fish through the water, forcing water and oxygen over his gills. You never want to drag the fish backwards. And he's making his way out of the net and down he goes. Now before I do any more fishing, I'm going to spend a little while here, make sure that fish doesn't resurface. Because if he does, I need to spend more time with him. After fighting that fish and having him out of the water to measure him and stuff, he's a bit tired. But if he doesn't come back and it doesn't look like he's coming back up, that means he's made his way off and we're all good. Lovely little catch little brown trout, new PB brown trout, and we released him safely. Alright ladies and gents, I hope that this video shows that you do not need to know what they are feeding the fish to actually catch them. Trying to get a reaction out of the fish and getting them to strike, that is oftentimes the way to go.
Now, all of that being said, it was rather difficult out there today. I spent a lot of hours changing out the little setup, going to different lures, even using some flies, trying to see what I can get out there. Now, the reason I went for the flies is thinking that maybe if I have something that looks like bait fish, maybe these fish will go for them. <clears throat> and that first little tiger trout that was actually on one of the flies that look like the bait fish I'm seeing in the waters around me. Now, sadly, we did lose that little tiger trout. That would have been my first tiger trout. But like I said, I wasn't paying attention and I kind of messed up that catch. We did at least luckily get on some fish out there. Now at some stage, I'll get back out here and try for some tiger trout, maybe do some ice fishing or something. But the general idea was just to get some information out there. So please do give me a little thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Feel free to ask any questions down below in the comments. And if you're new to my channel, consider hitting subscribe, joining my community. But I want to thank you guys for following along. And like always, See you next time.